Hello, this is D, and I'm back with another video. Well, today we're gonna go through the Asus Rogue Ally, and I gotta be honest with you guys, I've had this for about a couple of days now, and I've really put it through its paces. And I gotta say, overall, I'm really impressed with this device. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say right off the bat is that when you get this device, it is gonna take roughly about a day to set it up. And I say a day because there's a lot of updates and downloads that you have to do on this device. Now I had to go through all the Windows updates, all the updates for the actual device. I had to do a firmware update. And then lastly, it did a BIOS update. Now the BIOS update, I gotta be honest with you guys, I was disappointed in the performance. It did take it down a notch. It updated to 3.19 and 3.17 gave me much better performance, but I have reverted back to that old firmware. So that's just something to look out for. If you see the new firmware out 3.19, decline it because it actually makes your performance worse. Now, apparently it was to improve the battery life, but the battery life from some reports is that it's exactly the same. So I don't know what really happened with that update. Asus is aware of it and they are going to fix that. So that was the only kind of down point to uh, getting my Asus Rogue Ally. Now, overall, the experience is fantastic fantastic on it. There's a host of things you can do on it and it is a very comparable PC. Now we'll get into that a little bit later. First, let's just get into a little bit of gameplay. So first, I'm just going to show you the launchers that we have on the uh, window here. Now, as you can see, we have the, the Xbox launcher. Uh, we have the Epic Store launcher, EA Games. Uh, we have Steam on here. Now, of course, I could put Ubisoft and some other stuff. But in the interest of time, I just didn't want to put a lot of stuff on here. I wanted to kind of get into it, especially with some of the games that I've already tried out. So first, let's just kind of get into uh, SmackDown versus actually WWE 2K23. I don't know why I said SmackDown. So it's asking me gamepad mode, which I'm going to choose. Done. And it's going to boot into it. Now, as you can see, we're seeing our desktop here. And Steam is doing an update. So... In some ways it's like a PC, but when you actually turn the device on, that screen that you saw there is actually what you're presented with. So you're not presented with the Windows stuff right off the bat. Now, of course, you can bring that up later and do everything you can basically do on a regular PC. So let's just get right into some gaming right now. We're watching it load up and I'm just gonna let this play in real time so you guys can actually see how long it takes to load up a game. Now, I believe WWE 2K23 is actually on my SD card. So, I think the load times might be a little bit longer than if it was on the SSD, but we are going to test some other games running on the SSD as well. So that wasn't too long, and this was all done in real time. I didn't do any type of cuts. I went straight into the game, and you're seeing it load like I'm seeing it in real time. So we're just going to start it up. And I have this sitting in a dock, as you guys can see. I'll get into that a little bit later on. So we do have power plugged in. And we do have a dock, and this dock does take a Ethernet port, which obviously makes the uh, internet connection much faster. Right now, we're running off of the Wi-Fi. I'll get into some of the features of this dock, and I'll even list it later on in the video. Okay, so we're just going to get into a little bit of gameplay here. We'll just go straight into it, one-on-one -on -one match. Uh, WrestleMania Backlash. Uh, let's go with one of my created characters. Let's go with CM Punk. He's making his return this weekend. Now, what's another good thing with the Rogue Ally is that you don't have to use it in its handheld mode. Like, obviously, this is the uh, best way to play it or the way it was intended to be played. But you can also hook up a controller. I do have the um, Starfield controller here. I'm just saving it for an unboxing. So I'm probably going to do an unboxing video after this. And then I'll hook it up and I'll show you later on in the video how the Steam Deck actually works with a controller. This screen is so much better than the screen that's actually in the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck screen, it's just not as vibrant. The blacks look really gray. The color is not as accurate. And in my opinion, it doesn't seem as bright. This screen is just a lot better. And as you can see, it's just very vibrant. So those of you that do have a Steam Deck, if you're wondering if the screen is better, I would say it's an infinitely better than the screen that's inside the Steam Deck. Another thing is that it's a lot lighter than the Steam Deck. That was the first thing that I noticed. Even the joysticks feel good. And I was thinking that the joysticks wouldn't feel as good because be honest with you guys, it's not the same quality as the ones that are in the Steam Deck. However, they're really, really good. Now, as you can see, this looks just like it looks on my PC, just like it looks like on the Xbox Series consoles. This is running at 1080p max settings 
and we're getting 60 FPS. I'm gonna put the counter on, so what you do is you press this button right here, and then you get the command center, and you have different abilities in here. So you can uh, control the orientation, game profiles, keyboard, real-time uh, monitor, which we're gonna put on right now, uh, frames limiter, you can put on there as well. You can uh, record the screen, and you can actually add some other stuff in there if you go into the settings and edit it. So uh, that's pretty handy, and it's just at a press of a button. That's it, and it's gone. So as you can see, we can see the metrics on the side here. So you see it's gonna jump up to 60 FPS. There we go. You can see the 60 FPS there. Now I gotta say, I was really impressed with the way that Xbox games played on this device. Gears of War 5, I had it running at very good settings. They weren't running at low settings and I was getting over 60 FPS. Now on average it was about 60 FPS, I uncapped it, but it still went over 60 FPS. Now this is a beautiful looking title and we have this running on the ROG Ally at over 60 FPS. The same went with Forza Horizon. That game looked stunning on the ROG Ally. In fact, all of the Microsoft games that I ran on the system, they ran flawlessly. So I'm gonna say right now, if you have Game Pass Ultimate, this device is a no brainer. Now, unfortunately, I didn't really test the cloud gaming because I just didn't wanna get into that. This device can play games natively and I see no need to be playing games in the cloud. However, you do have the ability to play Microsoft cloud games as well as PlayStation. And we'll do that in another video where we'll try some of the cloud gaming on PlayStation and the Xbox to see how the latency is. But this video, we're really concentrating on the core performance of the unit. And like I said, Xbox games, they run excellent on the ROG Ally. In fact, pretty much every game that I threw at it ran really well. The only game that I had to tweak a little bit was Street Fighter. Now the new Street Fighter at 1080p, high settings, low settings, didn't really matter. I wasn't consistently hitting 60 FPS. It was staying around 45, maybe sometimes it would hit 55 and it would drop down. What I had to actually do in this game was put it down to 720p resolution. Now, once again, on this small handheld device, 720p looks very crisp. You don't really see the hit in resolution as much as you would see it on a big screen TV. I do believe that Microsoft really needs to start working on making this device truly a handheld Windows 11 device. We do have some quirks, we do have some jankiness that comes from having Windows 11. It's not as streamlined as the Steam Deck. And that's one thing that I would like to see improved. And I think it will happen. We do hear some rumors that Microsoft is actually working on such a mode. And I think when that happens, this device is gonna be near Perfect. Now another area where the ROG Ally impressed me is with its PC implementation. Now you're able to hook this into your monitor if you have a USB to HDMI cable or use some type of dock. You're getting a fully functional PC. You're able to output at 4K 60 FPS and it works as a PC should. And I gotta say it is pretty impressive and it's a perk to having this device. Now I know most people are gonna just really wanna use this as a handheld device, but I gotta point it out that this is a very good option to have. Now hooking up peripherals is very easy, just like you would on a normal PC. Now I'm gonna show you guys how I hooked up my Xbox controller. I basically just opened up the Bluetooth settings, paired the remote, and I was good to go. Now I did run into one problem. Some of the games were not recognizing my gamepad, so I had to actually do a reboot and then of course all the games worked as you thought it should. Now the PC part of it is great but there are some downfalls. Like I said earlier the BIOS being updated to 319 without my permission and I actually went back in, I downgraded the system and then I got another prompt to update it again. Now silently it did one when I didn't actually see the prompt and I gotta say that is quite annoying. Another thing, some people that aren't really experienced with Windows or PC, they might have a hard time with this console. It's not as streamlined as the Steam Deck. So I would say if you're familiar with PC, this is a definite go. If you just want ease of use, you don't want to have to deal with Windows 11, then I would say just wait until they have a fully dedicated handheld mode that bypasses Windows 11 completely. Now you can do things like open Steam and big picture mode. There's other ways around it, but you're still gonna have to encounter some of the stuff that comes with Windows. Some of Ace's stuff is a little bit janky. It needs to be refined. Now I will expect them to put out a couple of updates that will fix a lot of issues. And over time, this device will get better. So 
Overall, I'm very impressed with the Xbox gameplay on the system. Once again, if you're an Xbox fan and you wanted to know how your Xbox games will play on this system, they will play fine. If you want to know how older games play, I played the last GTA game on this system. I say I was getting like 77 to 80 frames per second. So this system can go. It's got a 1080p, 120 hertz screen. And when you're hitting 80 FPS, you're really starting to take advantage of that screen. Now I gotta be honest with you guys, there's not gonna be a lot of games that are actually gonna hit that 120 FPS. Maybe some of the older titles, the newer titles, you're gonna be around 50 to 60 FPS. Now on this device, playing games at 45, 50 FPS, it feels great because it's a free sync screen. You don't see any of the tearing. It's a very smooth experience. But for the sake of the video and the device, I tried to get most of these games running at 60 FPS. So if you have this device and you wanna run it with everything cranked up at 45 FPS, there's nothing wrong with that. You're going to have a very smooth experience. Now I personally went out and got a third market dock and I gotta say it works pretty good overall. Now I'm gonna show you a little bit of the dock here at the back. As you can see, we got a host of USB ports. We have a USB-C going in, it takes a hundred watts. So this is able to charge the device. I think it charges it maybe at about 55 watts. Now when I put the device in and it charges, it usually stays fully charged. It might trickle a little bit, but then it goes back up to 100. So I think this dock is a pretty good dock. It also has an HDMI port coming out, which allows you to get 4K 60 FPS. Now in the description down below, I will link the particular dock that I used. And full disclosure here, I do get credit for this. It does go towards the channel if you do purchase it from the provided Amazon link. Now, as you can see, we have a pretty good setup here. Now, this is perfect to use in the office. If you have some downtime, you're on your lunch break, you just wanna get in a couple of rounds of your favorite game, you're able to do this on the ROG Ally. And this is what makes this device so amazing. And once again, the screen is fantastic. The speakers are great. The controls are excellent. Now, I know a lot of pre-reviews that came out, guys that had a device before the retail units hit, they were complaining about the face buttons. And I gotta say, the Y, X, B, A buttons, they all work excellent. They're not mushy, they don't stick, they work really good. The trigger buttons work equally as good. Now in the office setting, I might not wanna really hold the controller, I probably want it plugged in so I can get optimal battery life and I can get the best performance out of this device. And that's one thing. This device, you do get better performance when it's plugged in. I noticed right away that I got maybe about 10 frames per second on some games when it was plugged in, opposed to it not being plugged in. Now you still get great performance as a traditional handheld, but we gotta be honest here, this device battery life is not the best. It is cracking out 40 watts at times. Now, if you don't have it docked in, it's gonna take about 25 to 30 watts, most times sticking closer to 30 watts in its turbo mode, and that does drain your battery quite quickly. So that's kind of one of the cons on this device. You're not gonna get the same battery life as you would get in a Steam Deck, but you're also not getting the same performance. It has much better performance than a Steam Deck. Now there's some games that it is pretty close, and of course some optimizations are going to have to happen, but overall I would say most of the games perform a lot better on my ROG Ally compared to my Steam Deck. Now unfortunately I can't compare the Steam Deck with the ROG Ally because I sold it. Once I got the uh, ROG Ally, I knew that I would not be touching the Steam Deck again. And I think the sentiment's gonna be the same with a lot of gamers that have both devices. Now I'm not saying if you have a Steam Deck that you need to throw it out and go out and get a ROG Ally. No, of course you don't. If you're happy with your Steam Deck, continue to play it. But I will say that the ROG Ally overall is a better device. It plays more games in the Steam Deck. You can use all of your game fronts or game store fronts that are on PC. So that's Epic, you know, the Steam Store, Ubisoft, Microsoft. You can basically play it on this device. All the anti-cheat stuff is in there. There are some games that are on the Steam Deck that you're not able to play because the anti-cheat software does not work or it's just not compatible with the Steam Deck. You're not gonna run into that problem with the ROG Ally. And I gotta say, like for a handheld, it is fantastic. Fantastic. It played Street Fighter well, it played Forza Horizon well, it played Gears of War well. Microsoft games really played good on this. I think on um, 
Gears of War, I was getting like 60 frames per second. I think it went above that. I believe I captured it at 60 FPS, so I just locked it for the consistency. Uh, Forza Horizon was running at 77 frames per second at times. It was running really high. Now, I did turn down some of the settings and the resolution to achieve such a feat, but if you want to run it at 1080p, I'm going to say you're going to get 60 FPS. Now, if you want to run some of your games at 720p, you're going to get a much higher FPS. And I got to say, on this little screen, 720p doesn't look bad at all. So overall, I got to say this is a fantastic device, but it doesn't come without its problems. Like I said, when I first loaded this up, it took about a day to get everything up and running. There was a host of updates to do. So there was some jankiness too, and I just got to be honest about that. So if you're someone that doesn't have any type of experience with the PC, I don't know if this device is for you because it's just not as seamless as the Steam Deck. However, if you're someone that is familiar with PC, you're going to feel right at home with this device here with all the optimizations that you can do yourself in order to get the best performance out of the ROG Ally. Now, also, I got to say the battery life. The battery life is really poor on this. And optimization for some games could be better. Redfall, it played horrendously. Star Wars Survivor, I had to bump it down to 720p. I had to put some of the settings down in order to achieve around 60 FPS. It was kind of hard to get it working. It was a little bit janky at first, and I had to do a lot of tinkering. Now, over time, I know a lot of these games are going to be optimized, so I only expect this device to get better. So overall, I would say it's a really good experience. The cons are the battery life. Um, I would say that it's white because it's going to get dirty quite easily. I'm probably going to put a D brand skin on it or buy some type of case for it. And I think a lot of people will do that as well. I don't think there's a lot of accessories, at least official accessories for the Rogue Ally right now at this moment. The official one from Asus, I got to say it's really expensive for that dock. The case is extremely expensive and it doesn't offer a lot of protection in my opinion. It's not a hard case. It's a soft case. And for such a device like this, you really want to have good protection. So I would also recommend a third party case. But the problem is none are really available. I had to get one for a Steam Deck. And fortunately for me, it does fit it quite well. Another con I got to say is Xbox games on it. Now, don't get me wrong. The Xbox games, they work well on it. But I did have a few problems with the launcher. And I think it's in Microsoft's best interest to release some type of handheld support for Windows 11. This is a big opportunity for Microsoft here. They have kind of an official Xbox handheld device. And if they can support a gaming mode, a true handheld gaming mode for Windows 11, I see the adoption of this device going through the roof. Now, at this moment in time, you have a Steam Deck. I don't know if I would upgrade to this device. If you don't have a Steam Deck and you were thinking on which device to get out of the two, definitely go with the ROG Ally. If you do want to upgrade from a Steam Deck, know that you will get worse battery life, but you will get better performance. You get a better screen. You get a better handheld experience because the device is a lot lighter and a lot cooler. And the fans on the ROG Ally, they're definitely nowhere near as loud as the Steam Deck. In fact, you can't even hear the fans on the ROG Ally. Now, overall, I say the Steam Deck is a fantastic device. If I had to choose between the two, I'm going to choose the ROG Ally. I don't miss my Steam Deck at all. Now, overall, me rating this device, I give it an 8. I kind of want to give it a 7.5 for the software. Some of the software quirks on this are a little bit janky, and it's the launch of the device, so this is to be expected. But we got to be honest here. There are some issues with this device at launch. The battery life is not the best that it could be. We have some issues with the software. Not every single game experience is great. Some of them are like a 30 FPS experience. The odd ones were getting a little bit of stutter because they're not optimized for the ROG Ally. But overall, I gotta say it's a great experience. So my final score on this device, I'll say is a 7.5 out of 10. It's great for Xbox titles. They play fantastic on it. It's good for your PC game library. It just needs a few more refinements. And I think in a few months time, this will be a solid 8 out of 10. 
Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about all of this. Are you going to be getting an Asus ROG Ally? Have you received one already? Are you experiencing any problems with the 3.19 update? Did you downgrade? Are you experiencing some of the things I have experienced with this device? Or are your experiences completely different? Let me know all about it in the comment section down below. And like I usually say, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next one.